taxes, one of the two certain things in life along with death. And when it comes to taxation, the French have a bad reputation. Well, the stereotype is true. The French do pay a lot of tax. When you compare the amount of tax compared to the size of the economy, France almost always comes out on top. So what are the main taxes that individuals pay in France, and how do they feel about this heavy tax burden? Join us as we comb through the complex and confusing issue of French tax. Taxation might not seem like the sexiest topic for a show, but in fact, it is key to understanding life in France and social tensions that arise in France, like the recent Yellow Vest protest that kicked off in 2018. Now, France's system of taxation is particularly complicated. There's no official tally, but by some counts, there are over 200 different taxes. To keep things simple today, we're going to focus on individual taxation, things like income tax, social charges, wealth tax, the list is still a long one. And if French people have traditionally had a fraught relationship with the tax man, it's because they pay a lot of taxes. Year after year, France ranks among the countries with the highest tax rate in the world. French taxes make up 45% of GDP. That's about 10 points higher than most other industrialized nations. So what are we talking about when we talk about individual taxation in France? Well, here is a comprehensive break down for you. France's tax system can be tricky to navigate. There are three main types of personal taxes. The first that tends to come to mind is income tax, l'impôt sur le revenu. In France, there are five income tax brackets. The more you earn, the more you pay. But less than half of French households actually pay income tax, meaning that it only generates about a quarter of all tax revenue. A major way the government rakes in money is through social contributions, les cotisations sociales. These mandatory contributions are directly taken off your wages in proportion to what you earn and go towards funding France's generous social security and welfare system, so things like unemployment, pensions and health care. And then there are the many taxes that people pay regardless of their income. Chief amongst these indirect taxes is the value-added tax, VAT, called TVA in French. It was first introduced in the 1950s and is fixed at 20% for the majority of goods and services. Unlike in the U.S., it's already included in the price, which means there are no bad surprises at the cash register. And if you're not a resident of the EU, you may be able to apply for a VAT refund, which is about as good as tax news gets in France. Many of you sent in your questions about French taxes, particularly in regard to foreigners or dual citizens who at times have to pay twice. For example, David Wilder wanted to know about the intricacies of filing as a dual U.S.-French national. Well, technically, you have to file in both countries, but the tax systems are very different. In the United States, taxation is based on citizenship, while as in France, it's a domestic issue. And so anybody who has their tax residency in France is subject to French tax, regardless of their nationality. So that means that some French people who don't want to pay taxes in France, well, they end up setting up residency elsewhere, for instance, in the neighboring tax havens Belgium and Luxembourg. Next, our very own Europe editor, Catherine Nicholson, wanted to know if you really do pay less tax in France if you have a lot of kids. You absolutely do. In fact, even if you have one child, you end up paying less tax than a couple with no children. And the more children you have, the less tax you pay. And that's because in France, taxes are declared by household, the foyer, and not by individual. And the more dependent people you have in your foyer, well, the less tax you pay through a mechanism called the caution familiale. Now, a fun fact is that children can remain part of the foyer fiscal until the age of 25, so long as they're studying. Flo, Robert Skelton wanted to know how the French feel about paying their taxes. Are they okay with paying a lot if it's an exchange for good public services? Well, Robert, that's a great question, and polls suggest that a majority of French people think it's normal to pay taxes, though their tolerance is wearing thin. So I thought I'd go and ask them for myself. Beaucoup de choses. À payer les fonctionnaires, euh, etc. etc. Euh, armée, la justice, école, euh... ce qu'on faisait autre, tout ça. 
on trouve toujours qu'on paye trop d'impôts. On paye assez d'impôts, pas trop. J'avoue que je commence à être de plus en plus lassé. On a l'impression que l'argent est mis dans un gros panier et puis est redistribué sans qu'on sache vraiment pourquoi et où ça va. On est parmi les pays du monde, c'est eux qui payent le plus d'impôts. Enfin, on a un service, des services sociaux aussi qui sont euh, extraordinaires. On a de, de belles routes, on a accès à une certaine éducation, on a un système de santé qui est excellent. Peut-être la France, quand même, on a de la chance. Hein. Tout est quand même à peu près bien géré, même si on n'est pas content tous les jours. Les plus gros devraient payer un petit peu plus que les pauvres. Très honnêtement, la classe moyenne me fait beaucoup de soucis. Réduire les impôts, plus de transparence éventuellement. Une remise en question totale. On critique énormément euh, effectivement, les, les impôts en France, mais je pense que euh, ça fonctionne quand même pas trop mal. Je ne critique pas trop. <rire> For some people, there's a feeling of fiscal inequality in France, and that's due to the many loopholes and tax exemptions. Taking advantage of them has become a national pastime. These tax loopholes are called les niches fiscales, literally the tax cubby holes, and by some counts, there are over 450 of them. For example, journalists get a huge tax break, though the jury's still out on whether or not we really deserve it. Now, it's an opaque system that means that it's hard to see and understand exactly who pays what, and some people can feel like they're getting the short end of the stick. Now, many people are asking for certain specific taxes to be scrapped, but others are asking for one symbolic tax to come back. That is the wealth tax. This is called the impôt sur la fortune in French, the ISF. It's a hot button and divisive issue. And when he was elected, President Emmanuel Macron decided to eliminate it. Macron wanted to scrap the wealth tax in order to keep rich people based in France and to boost economic investment. But there's no indication yet whether or not that actually worked. To find out more about France's tax system, I'm joined by Steve Horton. Thank you so much for being on the show today. You're an American CPA, so a certified public accountant, and you've been working here in France for over 20 years, so you have a unique foreigner's perspective. France really gets a bad rap when it comes to taxation. Do you think the system is really that much more complicated here? It's not more complicated for most everybody. The French income tax system, if you're talking about just a normal employee that doesn't have anything special going on, is actually light years ahead of the U.S. tax system. It's very modern. The French website, impo.gov, is easy to access, and you can see what's going on with your taxes, and the collection system is easy, the payment system is easy. For 90% you know, of the people in this country, it's super simple. It gets a lot more complicated if you have a business, or if you're a freelancer, if you have a rental property, or if you own a, if you own a company, it gets a lot more complicated. If you're a freelancer in France, you have to file several different declarations every year, one for the income taxes, one to report the results of your business operation to a special tax center, and then another one to report the income that's subject to social taxes. So you have three different filings going on. Mm -hmm. A lot of French people feel like, in a way, they, they pay too much tax. Do you think that, you know, compared to other countries, that's true? For income taxes, absolutely not. France is very competitive for income taxes. But when you start talking about social taxes, uh, it is a heavy country, but that's also the way the society is organized. It's a different social pact in France versus what a lot of individuals are used to paying, let's say, in America, where in America it's sort of like, you know, you. Uh, you're on your own for social issues. You have to pay your own health insurance. You have to plan for your own retirement for the most part, whereas in France, the government is here for you. And so that comes with a cost. And so the, the government's percentage take home from a French paycheck is much higher in France because they're providing more protections. Mm -hmm. Recent debates in France have focused on the wealth tax, the ISF. Why is it so controversial? Well, I think it's only controversial in France for the people who are paying it, which is the, the less than 1%. I characterize French wealth tax now as being just a real estate tax. It's not any more expensive in France than it is in Texas. I think the Texas real estate tax is about 1.7%, and in France, on average, you pay about 1, 1.5% at the most. I think the people that are subject to wealth tax are, are already not here. People with a lot of real estate are already not here, and they're going to keep not coming here. The real issue in France is not the wealth tax. 
that everybody's talking about, it's the succession tax. Uh -huh. That's what's keeping rich people out of this country, not the wealth tax. Most people that accumulate wealth over their lifetime or inherit from their parents do not want to part with between 40 and 60 percent of their wealth to the government just for living in France. They would much prefer to, you know, leave this world as a U.S. resident where up to 10 million euros of wealth is not subject to any level of estate tax, whereas in France that same level of wealth, if it was passed to the next generation, would be subject to a 40 percent French succession tax. So in all your experience working here as a foreigner, do you see any areas where the French system uh, needs improvement? Cancel the succession tax. But that's a cultural choice. Maybe, maybe France doesn't want the foreigners to come to France. But if they did, they would cancel the succession tax. I'd be interested to see the economic study that says succession taxes make this economy stronger. I don't believe it. All right, interesting. Steve, thank you so much for being with us today and walking us through the intricacies of the French tax system. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. So is France's tax system a fair one? To answer that, it's important to remember just why we pay taxes in the first place. Well, wealth redistribution is an important part of the philosophy behind France's tax system. And some would argue that it works, because if you look at the wealth gap between the richest and the poorest before and after taxation, well, inequality is cut in half. Chipping in for the greater good is another key part of the French tax system. The idea is for the money to go to fund good public services. Everything from fast trains to first-rate hospitals, good universities, and France's generous social security system. But critics say that the quality of France's public services is going down, and so it's unclear what they're paying for. For some, the tax burden has become a source of resentment. It's a tricky situation. People want to pay less tax, but they also want to keep great public services. Maybe the first step to easing people's minds is to make the system slightly more transparent and a little less complicated. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show, but please keep tweeting me your questions at Flo Vilmino, and you can also reach out on social media. And we'll see you soon for the next edition of French Connections Plus.